information provided by... Okay, everyone. Our mission is to provide complete balanced nutrition for strength and energy. Yay! Ensure with 27 vitamins and minerals, nutrients for immune health, and ensure complete with 30 grams of protein. Ever notice how stiff clothes can feel rough on your skin? For softer clothes that are gentle on your skin, try Downy Free and Gentle. Downy will soften your clothes without dyes or perfumes. The towel washed with Downy is softer and gentler on your skin. Try Downy Free and Gentle. This is E.T. at the Grammys. Monday on E.T., it's our Grammy after party. The winners, performers, and all that Grammy glam. I just have a great time with these things. Meanwhile, eight-time Grammy winner Usher is gearing up for the Apple Music Super Bowl halftime show on CBS. Yes, and while we cannot wait to see who Usher brings out, we know his longtime friend Robin Thicke. Oh, he's ready. He's ready. <laughs> Happening now. Storms are already popping up. We'll take a look at where they are, where they're going, and what the primary threats are as we go through the night in just a bit. For the first time this week, we're hearing from the judiciary about those DA and Wren Collective conversations. It was a little surprising to me that anybody would take such direction from an outside group. More of what Judge Von Hell has to say coming up. February means love is in the air, and so are the deals. Coming up, exactly what's on sale, including a TV for the Super Bowl. The News at 5 starts right now. And first at 5, we want to tell you about a major airstrike in Syria by United States forces. Numerous reports cite more than 85 key sites targeted in retaliation for the drone strike that killed three U.S. troops in Jordan. Following that deadly attack, President Joe Biden warned that America would respond forcefully. Escalate its that this could escalate its involvement in the Middle East. This first airstrike comes the same day as the military held the dignified transfer of bodies. You see this playing out at Dover Air Force Base today. The reservists were killed. They will be laid to rest in their hometowns, many of them from Georgia. Stay tuned to ABC World News tonight after KSAT News at 5 for the latest in these airstrikes. Meanwhile, great clouds rolling back into the area just in time for the start of the weekend. There are good chances of rain, and for some folks, not everybody, but for some, they could see hail. Adam Kasky is here. Adam, schedule the rain arrival and just how intense it could get. We'll have some heavy showers, embedded downpours, and even, like you mentioned, the chance of some areas of hail. Now that doesn't guarantee it's going to hit your house, your car, your area. Actually, the odds aren't all that significant that they will. However, a few little hail swaths are possible with these thunderstorms right now. Just garden variety activity. Nothing serious closer to Hallettsville and Shiner Molten area east of town. Nothing in San Antonio. A few light showers popping up in the hill country and west closer to the Rio Grande. As we've been talking about about this time today, this is where we're going to be watching for the development. This is the main energy starting to move in from Mexico. Already a downpour just moved through Eagle Pass. You go up to Del Rio area just north of Del Rio High School. It could be some very small hail in that thunderstorm where you see the purple. Otherwise, Del Rio, just wait momentarily and the thunderstorms moving in. Our storm chances around San Antonio spike after sunset. By 9 o'clock, they're up to 70%. That's where they stay all the way through 2 a.m. And then notice by sunrise tomorrow, we are done with the showers and we start to clear out. 80 Eagle Pass, 60s and 70s elsewhere, comfortable but turning stormy. More on the future cast, how fast these storms are moving and the primary threats in a bit. Thank you, Adam. We'll see you in a few minutes. Well, more fallout today on the district attorney and Wren collective conversations that we first broke earlier this week. Today, we are hearing from the most senior criminal court judge in Bear County, Judge Ron Ron Hell, telling our Erica Hernandez that many of the conversations between the DA's office and that Austin based criminal reform group he finds troubling. It was a little surprising to me that anybody would take such direction from an outside group, a group that doesn't understand Bear County, the citizens of Bear County, and the way things work in this community. 379th District Court Judge Ron Ron Hill concerned after conversations between the district attorney's office and the criminal justice reform group, the Wren Collective, were made public. We have showed you conversations about policy and high-profile cases, but there were also conversations First Assistant District Attorney Christian Henriksen had with the founder of the Wren Collective, Jessica Brand, concerning county judges. This one from February 7, 2019, Brand says, I heard the judges' meeting on bail went poorly. Henriksen, in part, responds, It was frustrating. I also think that they don't fully understand the law on this issue. 
I never expected them to be helpful. A month later in March, Brand reaches out to Henriksen and says, are the judges being any better or would it be helpful if some real justice PAC volunteers started calling? So any conversations that they may have had about judges not doing certain things is completely inaccurate and it comes from an area of a lack of understanding as to what was happening at that time. There were also exchanges about specific cases, including the case of Otis McCain, who was convicted of murdering San Antonio Police Detective Benjamin Marconi. Ron Hell, who presided over McCain's trial, says he's concerned about what has been reported. Judges are never allowed to influence in any way the public and how those cases are looked at. It is troubling uh, that these kind of cases would be discussed in that type of manner. Ron Hill says it would be nice to get an explanation from the DA himself on all of this. We want to make sure that cases are tried with integrity and that cases are effective enough to where folks in the community feel confidence that the result of all these cases that we handle have been worked at and looked at in an appropriate way. Now we continue to reach out to the Ren Collective, but we have not been able to get a hold of anyone by phone or by email. We've also reached out to the DA's office to interview Christian Henriksen, but have not heard back from them either. At the Cadenaries Justice Center, Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. And in the wake of this investigation, Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar seems to be distancing himself from District Attorney Joe Gonzalez. Within just the last hour, KSAT investigates obtained this letter sent by the sheriff yesterday, asking the district attorney to respect attorney client privilege going forward and to keep their conversations confidential. The letter comes days after KSAT revealed hundreds of pages of messages between Gonzalez, his first assistant, Christian Hendrickson, and the head of the Wren Collective. Again, that's an Austin-based criminal justice reform group. The sheriff's name was mentioned throughout the messages, which included the DA sharing the sheriff's thoughts on how to possibly charge those people who arranged to fly migrants from San Antonio to the East Coast. That's not the only letter we saw today. The Wren Collective also received this letter. This one from an attorney representing Sheriff Javier Salazar. The February 1st memo requests that the group cease and desist using the name of the sheriff and the Bear County Sheriff's Office to further its agenda. In this letter that was sent to the Wren Collective, quote, it is alarming to see the attempted use of Sheriff Salazar and the Bear County Sheriff's Office to advance your agenda in a misleading way. That was part of what we said of what was in the letter. It comes days after KSAT revealed all of those conversations back and forth. The sheriff's attorney telling KSAT this afternoon, quote, it was alarming to him, the sheriff, when he read through some of those messages. Of course, we will continue to have much more on the story coming up at six and tonight on the night beat. Well, new at five one week ago, we showed you this video and it instantly sparked outrage. A man with a partially amputated leg going down the stairs, pushing his wheelchair because the elevator was broken. Residents living at the Kenwood housing complex told us they see this as normal. That elevator had been out for weeks. Garrett Berger headed back out today to find residents much happier. Taking the elevator has never felt so good. We were at this public housing apartment for the elderly and for disabled people last week. Now the elevator is finally fixed. Opportunity Home San Antonio, formerly known as Saha, told us last week that the elevator repairs began in early January. But after a part was delayed, it was discovered another part was needed too. Now it looks like they finally got it. Residents tell us the elevator started working Thursday. How big of a difference is that? It's a lot. I can bring my groceries and, you know, water and everything. Yeah, one month was too much, too long time. Yeah. Opportunity Home says it offered affected residents hotel accommodations. But people at the apartment say not everyone wanted to go and leave their apartments behind. Eric Berger, KSAT 12 News. Just glad those elevators are working again. Well, let's talk politics now. Democrats holding their first official primary in South Carolina on Saturday. And although President Joe Biden expected to win big there, the state marks a key test for Democrats as they prepare for the general election. Both Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris have made multiple trips to the Palmetto State in recent weeks to campaign. Our Washington correspondent Julia Benbrook joins us live from the White House. Julia, why is South Carolina so important?
Well, while South Carolina is a Republican stronghold in general elections, it provided a critical turning point for President Joe Biden back in 2020 when he was working to become the Democratic nominee. The Democratic National Committee changed its order of primaries to diversify early voting states, putting South Carolina in the first position this year. I told you all that you could launch a candidacy. You, you launched Bill Clinton, Barack Obama to the presidency. Now you launched our campaign on the path to defeating Donald Trump. President Joe Biden's 2020 primary win in the Palmetto State marked a key moment in that election. He swept all, um, you know, 46 counties there in South Carolina. And it was after some of the early states where he didn't have as much strength. Support from the black community and a key endorsement from Representative James Clyburn, who is supporting Biden again, helped catapult him to victory four years ago. Joe Biden saw that we needed enlightened leadership. Biden is now hoping the state will energize his re-election campaign as he prepares for a possible rematch in November. You're the reason we're going to win and beat him again. Biden is expected to walk away with a big win on Saturday, but it's also a crucial test. Polls and Democratic focus groups show that many black voters feel disengaged and disenchanted with the political process right now. So the key question is, who will turn out? Now, the Republican South Carolina primary takes place later in the month, and it's an important one for the state's former governor, Nikki Haley, as she tries to prevent a Trump-Biden matchup in November. Reporting live at the White House, Julia Benbrook, KSAT 12 News. Julia, thank you. Let's check Trans Guide right now on this Friday, 410 at Fredericksburg. Things are moving, but they're a little slow. I think that's the westbound lanes of Loop 410 that you're seeing there. Slow going as uh, people make their way toward their weekend. And speaking of traffic, TxDOT postponing this weekend's major closure on the interchange at Loop 1604 and I-10. It's because of the rain and the wind in the forecast. Officials say the planned closure will be rescheduled for another weekend. Construction crews still need to place the final beams for a flyover ramp that will connect Loop 1604 East to I-10 West towards Bernie. February Black History Month and a new exhibit that honors enslaved people is opening tomorrow in Sutherland Springs. The exhibit is a display of quilt squares that represent the lives of the men and women who were enslaved at the Polly Plantation known as Whitehall in Wilson County. The quilt squares are used because there are no photos. You may remember Jesse DeGoyado told us about the Polly Plantation during a History Untold episode last year. PhD scholar Melinda Creech is behind this exhibit. In all, there are 29 quilt squares with a description of each enslaved person's life. They display a permanent exhibit in, Polly's, in the Polly Room at the Sutherland Springs Historical Museum. All right, you know what that music means? The rodeo season upon us tomorrow. Downtown San Antonio will go Old West as the annual Western Heritage Parade and Cattle Drive takes place. You can ride the parade route. There's going to be bands, carriages, horses. Those famed Texas Longhorn cattle make their way down Houston Street. I think the insiders actually are going to have their own carriage. The parade starts at 11 a.m. tomorrow. If you can't be there in person, you can watch it all on our platforms on KSAT 12, KSAT Plus YouTube and KSAT.com. Well, straight ahead, this is a short month packed with a super game, presidential vibes, and a lot of love. Retailers marking the occasions with big sales in stores and online. The big ticket items you can get a good price on in February. Coming up. Ah, it's February when love is in the air. So are the deals. And of course, President's Day always brings out the sales on big appliances. 12 Under Sides Marilyn Morris shows us some top rated TVs, phones, and mattresses that are on sale right now. Thinking about a new TV? Pre-game deals are second only to Black Friday. In the beginning of February, you can find lots of great deals on TVs. As we get ready for the Super Bowl, plenty of retailers are offering big discounts right now. Consumer Reports says February is the best time to buy some top-tested products, like this big screen, a 98-inch 4K TV from TCL. It's $2,000 at Best Buy. That's a $3,000 savings. 
The electronics deals don't stop there. Last month, Samsung unveiled its newest smartphone, the Galaxy S24. This means that older models will start to go on sale and there will be incentives to buy new ones, such as trade-in offers. The Samsung Galaxy S23 is now $699.99 at Samsung. Consumer Reports says this phone has some of the best cameras for photos and video. President's Day sales focus on big-ticket things for the home. This LG French Door Smart Refrigerator is reduced to $14.98 at the Home Depot. It aced CR's test for keeping uniform temperatures. We always say never pay full price for a mattress, and February is a great month to get one at a discount. Thanks to President's Day, we'll see savings all month long. This Casper Wave Hybrid is $21.66 for a queen size at Best Buy and Casper. This mattress in a box gets high marks for comfort in owner surveys. February is also a great time to find deals on space heaters and dishwashers, just maybe not for Valentine's Day. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. <laughs> important tip there. Yes. Marilyn just gave everybody. That's very yeah. important caveat. Not a good Valentine's gift. All right, look at the clouds out there. A lot of people have been talking about the rain, the timing. It's coming. It is. We'll have some scattered showers and thunderstorms this evening and tonight. And by sunrise tomorrow, it's all done and over with. We do have some storm threats because there is the possibility of a few strong to severe storms. Hail tops the list at a moderate threat. Now, this doesn't mean it's going to be hailing everywhere. Hail is very isolated. Keep that in mind. It's localized. But of course, where it hits, it can cause significant damage. So there is the potential for a few localized areas of hail developing across South Central Texas. Unfortunately, it's impossible to tell you exactly where they'll be until those hail making storms actually start to develop. Could have some wind gusts up to 60 miles per hour. And with all the rain that we had last week, we can't rule out some localized flash flooding. Let's take a look at authority radar right now. A little bit of activity off to the east. We talked about that earlier. This is closer to Hallettsville, Lavaca County, not far from Moulton Shiner, right in between Moulton and Shiner, and just some moderate to heavy rainfall, but very brief in nature, not adding up to a whole lot. Let's go farther to the west and nothing in San Antonio, a little bit about to clip Bernie. So far, no lightning associated with this, but notice how these little showers are popping up and then slowly getting a little bit stronger. So this this one right here is going to be passing north of Bernie between Comfort and Bernie and I temp. We're watching the one that's over Medina Lake Reservoir. That's making a beeline for Bernie right now. Just a light shower, but Bernie within a half hour, you can, you can expect that shower possibly even getting a little bit stronger because that's going to be the general trend as we go forward. Speaking of stronger, not severe, but uh, this storm will be very noticeable when it moves in and just clips Crystal City. This is be going to hit between La Prior and Crystal City, and it's moving really quickly. I mean, just to give you a time frame, this is moving about 45 miles per hour. This one's flying along. So the heaviest part of this storm looks like we'll just clip Crystal City at 527 p.m. La Prior, you'll get the light rain and then the heavier rain will hit at 535 p.m. for La Prior. Let's head north to Del Rio. This is where it's been really coming down hard and just moved in a few minutes ago into Del Rio, right along Highway 90. You know where 90 goes, no, cuts north before Lake Amistad? Well, this is the heart of Del Rio, and this is very heavy rainfall. This purple could indicate maybe pea size hail, but nothing damaging here, nothing severe. Just very loud and, of course, very noticeable, but some good soaking, drought denting rain that we like to have. Just a quick 3D look at this, just in case, just to get to just see how high those cloud tops are. And we'll go in right now. It doesn't look like hail would be any problem within uh, that storm. But of course, these will continue to develop and move eastward towards San Antonio through the night and come to an end before sunrise tomorrow. We could actually get it in two waves. The first little batch of storms moving in by eight, nine o'clock in San Antonio, then a little bit of a break. Then once the front moves in by about 1, 2 a.m., that's when the next wave could be. And this secondary wave I think would have a higher risk of the higher wind gusts opposed to large hail. But then notice by 4 a.m. the sky clears and we'll wake up to sunshine here in San Antonio. And even in our eastern counties, you'll have sun pretty quickly after sunrise. Rainfall potential it depends where the downpours are, but between a half inch to an inch for a good portion of us. 53 and sunny at 7 a.m. tomorrow, making it up to 70 degrees. A bit breezy, but you'll really notice the wind on Sunday. 
We're talking wind gusts between 40 and 50 miles per hour on Sunday. Check out that future cast. The wind will be really picking up on Sunday. The next week, pretty quiet overall in the 60s. Mixture of sun and clouds. All right. Thank you, Adam. All right. My big question is, are the Spurs ready to make a deal? I would like to know the answer to that question, but we will know soon enough. The NBA trade deadline is next Thursday. Will the Spurs land anyone new to surround Victor Wembanyama? Trey Jones details the vibe around the locker room this time of year. Plus, SAFC brought in half a roster's worth of new talent this offseason. We'll hear from some of the newcomers right after the break. For the third time this season, the San Antonio Spurs and New Orleans Pelicans square off against each other. The Pels won the first two meetings handily. Tonight, Keldon Johnson is out again, still recovering from an elbow laceration. Zach Collins, on the other hand, will be re-entered into the lineup. Now, the NBA trade deadline is rapidly approaching February 8th, and it's not likely the Spurs will make too much noise, but they're, of course, interested in finding complimentary players to surround Victor Wembanyama. Trey Jones shares what the locker room is like this time of year with the trade deadline looming. You know, it hasn't it hasn't really changed our locker room at all. Um, we know that, you know, it's not really in any of our control um, what happens. Uh, we continue to enjoy each other um, while we can. Obviously, we know and from seasons past, you know, locker room can get shaken up at any point, especially in this last week. Um, it can get crazy. So um, just continue to, you know, control we can control stay focused on um, you know the games and everything um, and, and let you know what happens happens um, you know we don't really have control over that should be an interesting week across the NBA but as for tonight the Spurs and Pelicans tip off at 7 o'clock Zion Williamson is still questionable San Antonio FC started practice this week to prepare for the 2024 campaign. Their first game isn't until early March, but it's never too early to start learning from head coach Alan Marcina. There's still plenty of new faces for SAFC and over half the roster is getting its first experience with their new club. The SAFC vets gave some advice to the new guys about what it's like playing at Toyota Field. Oh, uh, Mitch showed me a video. The first day I came here, he showed me a video of when they won the championship in 2022. And it, it looks like it's a special atmosphere. It looks like the fans really buy into the team. So I'm really excited to be here. I think it's going to be a special year, and I'm excited to play in front of the fans. Oh, man, I show him the video. There's a, I had Gabe send it to me a couple weeks ago. Uh, it's a video of Santi's third goal in the final. And the crowd, when Tuku spun those two guys on the corner, you just see everyone rise up. And it's not filtered through the, the broadcasting booth. It was just the 4K camera. Everyone's cheering already, 10,000 people on their feet. Everything goes silent right as Abu hits the ball, hits Santi, and all of a sudden, yeah! You know, like that gives me goosebumps. You know, I, I love playing here. And, um, you know, I think it's the, the best environment in, in U.S. soccer. And, you know, I don't care what people say about MLS. You know, this is, this is the real deal. People actually care. That's awesome. Coming up tomorrow night, we'll hear from Coach Marcin on a tactic he used to learn more about his new players. It's going to be a new-look team. I'm kind of excited about that. Yeah, same. Hope they keep the success. Exactly. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. Mary. We'll be right back. See you at 6.